this is Danny with The Woolery. Uh, today, I think we're gonna talk a little bit about Lazy Kates. I have a couple in my hands, uh, and you can see that they look very different. <laughs> but they're basically the same idea, um, and basically what they're used for is to hold your bobbins while you're plying, or for any other reason, just if you need a bobbin uh, to be held <laughs> for any reason. Uh, the ones that I have in my hands, this is the Kromsky Upright, uh, and this is the Lindrum Tension Lazy Kate. Both of these are tensioned, though. You can see I have a tension over here, and we'll talk about that a little bit in a second. Um, and there are some other options out there, too. There are some arched Lazy Kates, like the Schacht, and the Kromsky has an arched one as well. Or you might have a wheel which has an attached Lazy Kate, uh, like this one right here. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Lazy Kates a little bit. All right, deal with some rattling a little bit. <laughs> But I am now set up, essentially I'm ready to ply right here. Um, so what you are seeing here is my Lindrum Lazy Kate that we had here just a second ago. I'll hold these so they don't rattle. Uh, and what we've got is two bobbins on it right now. It can have up to three, obviously, so we have three uh, little spokes. It depends on your personal Lazy Kate, whichever one you get, uh, as to how many that you can fit on it. And then depending on the size of your bobbin as well, uh, like if these were really big, I might not be able to fit more than two on it at once, uh, which is totally fine. If you have a smaller Lazy Kate but a bigger bobbin, you might just be limited in how many you can have on it at once. But a lot of the time you can fit them on there anyway. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the anatomy of a Lazy Kate just a little bit. So obviously you have the, the I don't know really what you call them, rods, I guess, uh, the, the, the bobbins that will actually sit on there. Um, and then you have, in this case, you have a string that's attached to a hook here. And then on the other side of things, you have a knob where the string is wrapped around. And what that does is allows me to run that string along what I have here, which is a, basically a little whirl. This is a storage bobbin, bobbin's up. Uh, and you, you can run it across that little whirl and add tension to it. Uh, this also works for your spinning wheel bobbins, obviously, because all of them have a groove somewhere for your either your drive band or your uh, tension band or both uh, to ride across. So there's always a groove somewhere on a spinning bobbin that you can use to tension on a lazy kate. Then, if you don't have rambunctious yarns that want to go places, uh, you also usually will have some kind of uh, on ones that where they stand up like this. You usually have a uh, a guide of some kind, a yarn guide, uh, that keeps them all from being unruly. So that's the basic anatomy of a Lazy Kate, uh, or at least a Lazy Kate that's, that's sat down like this one. And actually, let me go and get the Kromsky as well, and we'll look at it without any rattling bobbins on it, and we'll talk about the anatomy of that too. All right, so no more rattling. But this is a Kromsky vertical Lazy Kate, uh, and most Lazy Kates are going to work pretty much exactly the same. You'll notice that basically everything we talked about on the Lindrum is the same as this one, with the absence of a yarn guide, which is fine. Uh, so in this case, you've got your rods that go across horizontally, and you just take them out like this, stick your bobbin on, and then weasel it back through, and there you go. Uh, and then here you have the tension band, uh, it's just a piece of string in this case, uh, is going to be attached to the top. This rolls back and forth so you can adjust your tension as necessary. And then you have a spring at the bottom, which allows you to tension as you please. So, yeah. All right, so we are ready to ply. Um, and I've already started just a little bit, so you can see that I'm already getting going a little. Uh, but basically, this is what a Lazy Kate is exactly for. I've got two yarns, single yarns, that I want to ply to make into a two-ply yarn. Uh, and I need some way to hold them, because if I try to do it without a Lazy Kate and just have my bobbins on the floor, they'll just kind of go all wacko crazy. Uh, and we'll show you that here, uh, what that would look like, just for grins. <laughs> You know, if you don't want that to happen, <laughs> because nobody wants that to happen, uh, then you use a Lazy Kate. So you will be able to see here in just a second that I have my Lazy Kate pretty far away from me, behind myself, kind of off to the left, uh, mostly because I draw forward with my right hand. That's just comfortable for me. If you draw forward with your left, maybe you want to have it to the right of you. Uh, but you want to have some fairly good distance between yourself and your Lazy Kate. Uh, the general rule of thumb is the further that it is from you, the better that it works. <laughs> I don't really know the physics behind that, but it's proven because it's what we all do and it seems to work really, really well. So I would say 
when you're determining distance on how to, you know, how far to keep your lazy cake away from you, you and your spinning wheel away from yourself should probably be enough. Uh, you don't want to have it right here next to yourself. Uh, it's just not quite enough length of, of you know, there's, there's quite a lot of, of slack here. And it doesn't have to be slack. We'll talk about tension in a minute. Um, but, you know, you want to have it a, a fair distance from you so that you have a fair amount of yarn between yourself and your lazy cake uh, and your spin wheel so that it has time to do what it needs to do. Uh, so yeah, now you're ready to ply. So you just get going. If you want to have a hand here between the two of them, or three of them, or four of them, uh, you can do that. And we're not going to talk about plying today, that's a whole different subject, but that's what a lazy cake is for. You can hear it back there working, probably, which is just lovely. Keeps everything all nice and clean for me. The only thing, right now, is that I do not have my bobbins tensioned. And tension is really important with the Lazy Kate, I think, uh, and many people think, because it stops your yarn as you are pulling on, and you'll notice as a spinner that you probably draw on a little bit faster when you're plying, not always, but sometimes, uh, or most of the time, I would probably say, uh, than when you're just spinning regularly, when you're spinning a single. Uh, what that does is allows for a lot of draw off really quickly, and then you have this little stop while you let it fall onto your wheel, and then you continue. Um, so then you end up with all of these little kinks and pigtails and all of this bunching up behind you if your bobbins are not tensioned. Tension is really important in that when you have a little bit of tension on your bobbins, it stops them from over rolling when you're not pulling anymore. So if I pull, it continues to roll. All right, so now I am tensioned back there. Uh, just gonna go. <laughs> and you can see in here and Feel as the spinner when you have a lazy cake in your hands what difference it makes. And I'll talk a little bit about why you might like tension versus not having tension and what the merits are of it, aside from just not having all of this incessant rattling behind you. <laughs> but because that's nice. It's nice to have a nice, cathartic, quiet spinning experience. But I'll give you guys a moment to check out how it works. All right, so reasons that you might want a tensioned lazy cake or want to put tension on your lazy cake so if you have a tensioned lazy cake you don't necessarily have to use the tension if you don't want to like we just showed you you don't have to have it on there if you don't want to but the reasons that you might like to use it there are many of them and personally i recommend tension on just about everything and it doesn't have to be high tension just a little just a smidge so that it doesn't go flying all over every which way and everything stays nice and tidy and you're comfy and everything's going really good uh things that are really delicate like let's just say you have a hand spun cashmere that you spun very softly on purpose and so as you're going, it tends to break a little bit under the tension of your lazy cake. Then in that case, you may want to take tension off. Um, that might just be a little bit too much for that uh, particular purpose. <laughs> uh, so any other reason that you wouldn't want to have tension is totally up to you. I'm not here to tell you you have to use it. I'm just here as an advocate for it because I think it helps a lot. Um, one really good reason that I was just talking to my colleague about that you may want to use tension where it may not occur to you like, oh, that makes sense, is if you are doing something, especially in like an art yarn situation, where you have things that you may want to come off at different rates. So in one case, you may have your core yarn that you have under tension so that it only comes off as much as you need at a time, but then you have your other uh, outside yarns, you know, your decorative yarns, they're going on the outside that either you don't have under tension at all, or you have on a different lazy cake with different tension. Um, so different materials may require a little bit different tension. If you're not applying something onto itself, uh, you may have different tension needs. Uh, you may just need to have them under tension no matter what, uh, as opposed to not having anybody under tension at all. So uh, there are a lot of reasons to use it and not to use tension, but I really like it. And I think that having the option is better than not having the option at all and then really needing to have it and then not being able to use it. So yeah, there are lots of different options out there for tension to Lazy Kate's as well. It doesn't just come down to these two that I've showed you. This is just two of very many. Uh, and then not to mention that there are other ones out there that do different styles of tensioning. Some of them are gravity tension, some of them are, uh, you know, many other different kinds of tension. Some of them have little squeegees that go on the top uh, that tension them there. And all of them work the same. 
uh, as far as being able to put just a little bit of tension on your bobbin for you while you ply. So that is how you use a Lazy Kate. Really simple stuff. Of course, if you have any questions, you're always welcome to ask. But yeah, have fun.